call it be wonderful. That'd be wonderful, but maybe also record. Okay. <laughs> Are we recording? Okay. Thank you, Yes. Okay. So here I'm going to read um, the passage from the Precious Golden Garland as it states, the channel that connects the jewel to the ocean, and here it's referring to the channel between the eyes and the heart, is white, smooth, and hollow inside. Here the great wisdom Bindu flows, unsullied by blood. The moment the body is initially conceived, there is a chakra of procreation that develops through the function of water. At the navel chakra, the two eyes come into existence, the eye of luminosity and the eye of the elements. From the eye of the elements, the body is pro produced. From the eye of luminosity, the light of wisdom is illuminated. In the center of the pupils, there are channels resembling the horn of an ox, subtle at the base and broad at the tip, along with them there is clear, radiant, water-like channel called the water luminosity of the far-reaching lasso. The omniscient one provides more details here. Through the pure light channel, the appearance of wisdom can be sustained. Through the support of the elemental channel, the perception of confusion occurs. Therefore, those with prajna will know that there are two aspects of support and the supported. This is referred to in the heart essence tantras as that which connects the heart to the eyes. The greatly naturally occurring secret wisdom channel called the hollow crystal kati. So mm -hmm. here here. Thus, these wisdom pers uh, perspectives are exactly compatible. Naturally occurring indicates in the clear light channel is not generated through the root causes and contributing circumstances. Through this interdependence, the way that the four luminosities arise, such as the luminosities of the empty bindu, that is like the eye of a peacock feather, it is stated here in the self-arisen Vidya Tantra, the four luminosities are as follows. The luminosity of the empty Bindu, the luminosity of the Datu of awareness, the luminosity of the emergent Prajna, the water luminosity of the far-reaching Lasso. All of these abide within every living being. The ability of this delicate water luminosity of the far-reaching lasso to perceive things as large as mountains, houses, and the like is due to this, the subtle aspects of the winds. Ultimately, by purifying the four elements, including karmic winds, one experiences the maturation of wisdom winds as the four luminosities. In dependence upon the innate support by perfecting the strength of the four visions one arrives at the ground of, of exhaustion. The manner in which the pith decision occurs is stated in the precious treasury of the genuine meaning. Maybe find a good stuff. Right there. Right there. <clears throat> First, it is necessary for the vision of Turgyal to arise. For this, it is necessary to be without fixation during meditation. In the final stages, it is essential for everything to become exhausted, since awareness must combine with wind to seize the immutable resting place, the aspect of wind must be purified. After the radiance of awareness increases, it must eventually teach, reach exhaustion in the inner datu. This transcendent state is difficult to comprehend, but due to the kindness of the guru, after a long time, I was finally able to reach it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> As you can see, this gets pretty involved, pretty intricate, huh? Um, let's do dedication before we sully. <laughs> <laughs>
Or did it give a mug? Give a mug and do 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 Thank you so much, Mama. Yeah. Mama, one more. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments, questions? <laughs> it's like blown away. <laughs> you guys look like you're blown away. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> that was very interesting. I think uh, starting from the beginning might be helpful. I might need to pick this book up you don't have an, another one i mean i've have... got the this is the only one from yeshe Kondra that oh no don't give that to me I'll, oh I'll no figure oh, it out. oh i oh, you mean get it yeah yeah oh, oh because i thought you needed it right now well um can i see it i might i might get into it um Let me see. today i'll probably read it today and then make notes but um and thank you so much, by the way, and of course to all the translators, we're very grateful. But this book, not so big, but it houses probably an entire, like, uh, volumes and volumes, right? And here, it's, it's amazing how they compacted so much in here. But I think it would be worthwhile to, to help contextualize things, to, to go from the beginning to the end. Hmm. Right now, we're getting, it's very... You know, I like getting this. Uh, we do that actually a lot, don't we? We we pick random parts of the books that speak to us. And luckily, we've had the, the chance to have that with my mom today. But because it's so interesting, if you guys want to, we could also go through it uh, meticulously, you know, a little bit slower, uh, systematically a little bit, with this profound introduction that we got today. So... Uh, you mind if I read it today? Sure, no problem. Okay. Yeah, and here, here, I usually keep it in here. Yeah. Very precious. All right, you guys, uh, looks like maybe some text. Oh, you have the PDF? Yeah. Oh, very good. Do you want to link that? I, I, I'm working on it. Okay, thank you. That's Lama Lama Sherab. It used to be Lama Doug. <laughs> and um, if you guys have any comments or anything, please uh, be free. By the way, Tashila, I'm sorry about your loss. Uh, I'm really keeping you guys in my heart. Uh, it wasn't my friend. It was uh, the friend of a friend of mine. Oh. Okay, and your, your friend doing okay? So and so, he learned about this uh, today, basically. It happened uh, yesterday evening. Wow. Pretty fresh. Okay. Well, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think your practice can really extend to them. So thank you for your practice. Yeah, one of the things Aww. I just wanted to mention. And yes, yes, the monkey says thank you for the transmission. You have a beautiful voice. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's very kind of you. It's yes, the monkey. See, it's weird. Um, I sort of can see more in the little ones. I don't know if you can see us both. Can you guys only see half my head? I'm wondering about these cameras. I, I can see all of both of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just different uh, depending on. Oh, it looks like you found it. Sweet. That's going to come in handy. Yeah, what I just wanted to mention was um, after that part that I just read, it actually goes into the instructions on how to actually do the practice. And there are different, there are, there are different postures for it, uh, meditational postures. Um, and we actually learned those on retreat. And um These are like four or five. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh well well there's the Dharma uh 
the Dharmatara, the Sambhogakaya, and the uh, Nirmanakaya. But then there's the three, also the three main ones. Yeah, those are the three main ones. And then there's the one, you know, laying like a, like the one that you went through uh, in, in your four leg, like the corpse and stuff like that. The lions. And yeah, the lion. Yeah, the lion. So, so they're different postures for different things. And you end up practicing. Um, you know, most of the time I'm practicing the the Nirmanakaya posture. Um, and that's is, just simply due to the fact that I've had knee surgery and I can't do some of the other ones right now. So so we can start to include her also in our list. Um, maybe her name hasn't popped up enough <laughs> for a list of just keeping here in the group. You know? oh. <laughs> we sort of took a, after... Um, you know how they have the, mm. the prayer chart at the prayer chart, and yeah. The KPC, yeah. they have mm -hmm. that list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what is the um, the Nirmanakaya posture? If you don't mind. Well, so it's a little bit different in the Yeshe Lama than it is uh, as that we learn on retreat. So, the Yeshe Lama, it's actually um, like this, and then like this, and oh, isn't it left for women and right? Yeah, for... exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like that, and so. But our retreat, they actually taught us uh, that you do the sage posture, which is the seven points of Arachana um, posture. Yeah, and you and Kenshin said you can vacillate between the two. You can either yeah. either do this one, which is the traditional one, or you can um, do the seven points of Arachana. Sweet. So I usually do the seven points of Arachana one. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm working my way back. As soon as I can get more flexibility in this knee, I'm going to get back to the traditional posture. You like that one better? Um, well, it, it actually helps control the internal winds better. It, it, mm -hmm. it move, you know, because normally the internal winds are like blasting out through all the different channels and causing all the discursiveness and all this. Stuff. And it kind of forces um, the mind to just be very focused and uh, so through, you, through aligning that channel. Yeah, through aligning that channel. Well, Lama Lena talks about that too, actually. Yeah, she she's the first one I've heard talk about. Um, Using your chin is yes, like, yes. To, like if you're feeling sleepy to put the chin right. Over. That's in the Yeshe Lama. That is straight out of the Yeshe Lama. That's interesting. Yeah, if you're feeling sleepy, you do the 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 Dharmata, the the Dharmadhatu uh, gaze, and the Dharmadhatu is the lion's pose. You know, where you where you do the Vajra fist, you go like that and like that, and, mm -hmm. and put it all like that. Mm -hmm. And if you get sleepy, you look upwards. Ideally, you'd be looking at a clear sky. You know, that's that's the best way to do it. Uh, is that you're question, if I may. Uh, a question <laughs> is, um, I, I'm I'm uh, confused about why these postures, the lion's pose and so forth, why these are specific to Togol as opposed to Trekcho. Wouldn't they be beneficial for Trekcho as well? But they're only taught in the context of Togol. So the objectives are slightly different. So in Turkyal, um, uh, you are uh, focused on realizing not only you're, you're focused on, I need to say this carefully, the realization of emptiness in everything. Uh, so there's a lot more um, focus on purifying the inner winds and channels, whereas in Turkture, you're, you're letting everything rest and kind of bringing it down and bringing it down. You're basically throwing uh, the brakes and everything. Whereas in Tergyal, you're now actively <coughs> focused on purifying the winds, the inner winds. And so the postures are, so they're different objectives. And, and they're, they're like really dealing with the channels. Yeah, they're yeah. really dealing with the channels and the winds. Whereas, um, like it was mentioned in structure, when, when you... Um, when you, and I hate to say the term completion, but we're dealing with dualistic language and dualistic language limits, you know, it, it causes conceptions and we're just, we're just in that dualistic space. So unfortunately, in, 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 in structure or for, fortunately, you're not going to be able to completely dissolve all the particles of the body and, and achieve the rainbow body. Whereas Turkyal is that process because you're you're completely purifying all the winds and channels, and so the mm -hmm. postures are to control that you know the winds and the channels, uh, to help um, uh, uh, you know purify the the link between the heart and the eyes, for example. So these aggregates mm -hmm. are purified, and so 
if you're sitting in emptiness, you're not really uh, focused on what's going on between between your heart and, and your eyes. So it's you're different. You're getting too specific. Uh, you're getting more specific in Kogyal. You're, you're getting more specific in Kogyal. So you're sharpening the blade, basically. You know. Uh, so in in um, in Trickture, you're 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 realizing the control of of the mind, and now you're going to take that into Kogyal, and I'm going to use it. So mm -hmm. kind of like that. But at the end of the day, then you give that up too. I mean, like yeah. it's like it said, you know, <laughs> you, you, the the idea is the purification of all efforts. At the end, it is just a natural state. So it's kind of a weird dichotomy that you have to do something to get to the natural state, which is doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, we do we do effortless abiding. Yeah. So this is getting more nuanced into that. Oh yeah, I'll read this uh, I've heard from the Bompa Lama that Trekto is Dokchun Samata and Togya is Dokchun Vipassana. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, almost the same in yeah, our lineage. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of the same. But I would say, I would say a good, good way to think about it that's practical and applicable is that Samata is stabilizing an awareness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then Vipassana is the natural insight that comes from that. Your spontaneous the insight, wisdom. Exactly, exactly the recognition. Yeah, or the spontaneous wisdom, right? That that comes from just abiding, mm -hmm. right? The uncontrived wisdom is the ultimate meaning of the pastana. And then also, there's a context where Trikto and Togya are inseparable too. There's another. There's a context where they're together. They're they're in union. So this is just getting very nuanced, which right. is pretty awesome. And I think you know, don't get overwhelmed, guys. Remember, if the more you hear this stuff, the more you read it. It just sinks in, in in asymmetrical ways sometimes. So um, I would say don't think about it too much. We can spend some time with this book. And and I know a lot of you guys are interested in Tokyo. So, um, yeah, we can spend some time with this. And maybe just don't crunch on it too hard because I feel like you might taint the simplicity. This, this book makes it sound really sort of uh, complicated if you don't know all the different stuff, but there is still a sim simplicity to it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, frankly, I didn't really think about the theory or anything behind it at all. I just did it. Yeah, um, I think it should be like that, yeah. I mean, you know, I trusted uh, my root teacher. Uh, my root teacher is His Holiness Kenny Rinpoche. Um, that's who I got my transmissions from, and you know, then uh, the individual instruction from Kenshin Seilong Gasso. Um, and I just trusted that these methods would would do what you know I expected them to do. Can I ask how long uh, you've known Kenshin? Oh gosh. 35 years, 34 years, something like that. I remember, like, when I was yeah. a kid, he was around. <laughs> yeah, 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 we go back a long way. <laughs> That's amazing. This is when these guys were first coming to America, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have one question, if you will forgive me. Uh, <laughs> Did I catch? <laughs> Okay, I, I was saying I have perhaps a, a blunt question, but in the context of our group, um, which is doing uh, learning Togal in the absence of a teacher who's on hand, uh, but in person or on a retreat setting or something that is useful. I mean, for for somebody who is re learning from a book or learning just strictly online or, or through even through the video chat channel that we have here, you know, which is different than having an in person. But remember, um, I said I can't teach Tokyo. I told you guys that recently. Right. So, <laughs> no, I can't teach it either. But um, uh, so it it definitely. So so let me just share with you the requirement actually to actually practice, you know, from the Yeshe Lama. Um, I went through three days of transmission and this was uh, given by um, uh, Kinchin Namgyal out of Oregon um, at uh, Tashi Choling. And, um, and there uh, we had uh, lung transmission, uh, teachings, and um, 
uh, then there was a Samaya associated with it. And that Samaya was 700,100 line syllable mantra. So Vajrasattva's mantra. That was before <laughs> you could open the book. <laughs> so she had to leave it on the shelf. So I left it here on my <laughs> altar uh, while I was doing my Samaya. And so um, I definitely would recommend that, that, you know, uh, if Tergyal is where you where you believe your heart is, that you do get to a place like a retreat center up here and then get the teachings directly yeah. from the teachers because um, there is a there there is a connection that um that you make and it's and it's hard to do let me just put it like this. It's ineffable. <laughs> when, we're, when we're all sitting there practicing, so we were all sitting around practicing Tagyal, and it was hilarious because and we were doing it actually in Virginia after having received transmissions. It was, it was our class, our senior class. And literally, the boundaries began to dissolve. And, but we didn't really realize that that's what was happening until somebody started thinking, and we don't even know who it was. Somebody started thinking about tropical fruits mm -hmm. and so i started getting these visualizations of like pineapples and stuff and i was like what the heck and, <laughs> and then finally somebody jumped up and said whoever's got hawaii on the brain would you knock it off <laughs> and we realized oh my gosh we're dissolving the boundaries here <laughs> and and that's actually what happens with the teacher then like i have sat down i don't know how many times to write kinchin a letter but every time I try to write him, it's like I'm talking to him. And the answers are coming like boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and just talk to you then <laughs> rather than write you a letter. <laughs> because, I mean, that, that kind of connection happens then. And you can tell that this is exactly what he would have said if he were sitting right in front of you. And I told him that last year. I said, I don't even bother writing you anymore because you seem to be talking to me all the time. <laughs> and he just busted out laughing. And he said, well, that's how it is. He goes, I am talking to you all the time. Do you listen? <laughs> Yeah, we've had a little bit of taste of that here. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, that's why I said it's important to make that connection, you know. And uh, my understanding is it can happen online. That's, I mean, I asked Kinchin before I took the Yeshivama uh, um, uh, empowerments, and, um, and he said, yes, of course. He go, He said, of course it'll happen. He goes, do you think time space is, is a thing or something? Like, I'm paraphrasing that right, right now. And well, I'm, you're, you're, you're commenting on something that's really cool, uh, an issue online right now. You know, people are sort of weighing it and debating it. No, yeah, Kenshin was like, oh, no, where, where is time? Where is space? <laughs> <laughs> So then the, the question would be, I mean, again, I'm being blunt, but forgive me, I want to be honest. Um, what is the benefit to us reading or or studying this book, Yeshe Lama, if we do not have a teacher who's authorized to teach us Togol? Mm -hmm. Is there any? Um, that's. You know, I'm not sure I can give you an answer to that. Um, my instinct would say you're sowing the seeds. Yeah, that's and you're I'm... you're laying the foundational seeds to have a connection to it, yeah. and so hopefully that connection to it then would lead to more opportunities then, and and I think to ensure that the connection is one that that one would want, I I think it's always important to you know observe one's motivation. And say, you know, what? Where's my mind and heart in here? Is it because I want to know some some cool Zogchen stuff, which I don't think you guys are doing, but you know, there are people out there doing that. And or is is it because I truly want answers? I'm asking questions. I mean, I'll tell you the one thing that has sustained me consistently on the path is um, mm -hmm. refuge, the true meaning of refuge. Because I really, uh, when I was 16 years old. Um, I started pulling the thread on phenomenon and the one thing I was always very good at physics and the one thing I couldn't reconcile was how is it that something that that is not a universal constant like time it varies with the velocity how is it that it has ultimate outcomes like birth and death how does this work and I started to realize there's something funky going on with phenomenon. There's, you know, this is, there's, you know, everything's a contradiction. And so I genuinely, uh, you know, wanted answers. I wanted answers. And I started pulling on that thread. And 
um, ultimately I found, uh, you know, it was like I was on a timer and that started buzzing when I was 16. And by the time I was 20, I was practicing Buddhism and uh, decided this is, this has the answers. This has the answers. Mm -hmm. Then I also realized that the focus on me, on myself is not a worthy uh, cause. The focus should be on the benefit of all beings. And so if you have, you know, if, you, if that can sustain you throughout your practice, and then you pick up something like the Yeshe Lama with that kind of, you know, if you go in, now I'm not going to say my motivation is perfect, please. I have plenty of motivations that are not perfect. Um, but the benefit of all sentient beings, and even if you just say it before uh, starting it, you know, or something, having that in your mind, um, this is for the benefit of all sentient beings. And whether, you know, Fake it until you make it if you need to, you know, <laughs> whatever. But also, you know, j just to get practical and conventional on you guys, uh, psychologically speaking, if you saw a candle when you were three years old and then you saw one again when you were 40, there's going to be a link there. And the same goes mm -hmm. for this stuff. This stuff that she just read you, uh, the next time, the next go around, you're going to have a sense of familiarity there. And then also when we're dealing outside of the sort of uh, samsaric framework, the matrix, um, you're getting something here. There's something happening here that's ineffable, that's non-conceptual. And so I would say the ultimate answer is non-conceptual. And then the sub answer, uh, aside from what she already provided, would be that, you know, it serves as, as a seeding a mnemonic. You know, it, it'll end up being a mnemonic for you the first the first tiny trace of a mnemonic you know that's reminding you of your true sort of and then later on it's going to keep on going you have karma with togya which and, and from a vajrayana standpoint that's pretty big deal uh, you know there's some people that are stuck in lam rim for, for their whole lives you know they never um so you guys really have some kind of circumstances here um and and that uh, this can all serve also as reassuring you that you know your heart's in the right place your practice is in the right place and things like that and i i still will i would try my best to get um you know someone who has the blessings to give the full instructions on togyo in, in a formal sort of situation you know um i don't like the word authorization it makes it sound a little bit like military or something it's more of a blessing because everybody's got the authorization to do what they want but you know the, whether you have the blessing from the lineage is a whole nother matter you know so but we'll i think we're doing great we're step taking baby steps into tokyo uh and and who knows what'll happen you know tashi has something he wants to say. yeah let's get to tashi here uh we can't see you by the way i don't know if that's uh intentional uh, can you see me now? You see your name. For me, it's a black screen. What about everybody else? Huh. No, I don't okay. see his video. Okay, huh. but yes, Sorry, amongst I'm us. Sorry. It might load in a minute. It might just be a delay on our. Hold, hold on, let us. I can. Uh, uh, we're gonna rejoin. Okay. All right. Strange that yes, she can see you, but I can't. There's Tashi. All right, can you can anyway, you see me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine, so it's okay. All right. Um, so now, um, just throwing in my two cents about uh, learning to uh, study Togal because I haven't uh, done the practices, but I had received the instructions from uh, other t uh, from uh, other teachers. Online, uh, one can uh, cannot. Uh, I'm just throwing my two cents because uh, I don't do this. I'm not doing this practice. Uh, one cannot uh, learn uh, properly the postures. I mean, uh, one in person instead can get uh, cor corrected. That's uh, also what I heard. Also, um, about um, studying it, uh, I know that bonpos tend to be a bit more. Uh, liberal so to speak uh, in uh, in teaching this practice uh, well uh, 
I heard that uh, for, for instance, from uh, um, a senior student of Nankai Norbu, that uh, Norbu is, was uh, very hesitant in, in even uh, mentioning uh, Togal because uh, this could uh, give. This is what uh, Norbu used to think. Uh, he believed that, that even uh, just getting uh, um, hearing of this and uh, getting a wrong idea, hearing of this prematurely, I mean, uh, and, get, and then getting a wrong idea would create a huge hindrance in one's path. I don't want to scare anyone, of course. That's just uh, me sharing what I heard. Personally, as I said, I received some. Uh, 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 looms about uh, pra uh, this practice, but I'm not doing this. I are there, they are there on my mental bookshelf, so to speak, for a future time I'm not right now. Not in my top priority, what I'm doing now. It's just, uh, my t just my two cents. So the best is uh, to go um, to go in person. Uh, although it's possible to receive the loom online. I received it both from a Buddhist uh, teacher and from a Bompus Lamas. So. Okay, we're just gonna say bye to Sherab. Yeah, have a beautiful bye, day. Love you. All right, thank you, thank you, and and thank you very much. That was a, a wonderful uh, a message, Tashi, uh, which uh, also touches on things that I had read too, because I'd also read Nam Kai's uh, concerns. I mean, he was always extremely hesitant to. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be that hesitant here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I get that. We come from a yeah. Tokyo lineage where. Yeah, it's there. It's accessible. Yeah. If we don't access it, it could be extinct. Yeah, but I, I my concern is simply that nobody be harmed. Uh, for example, we have uh, Destin's not present, but he's very young, and he's very eager. So yeah. I, you know, and I'm, I I don't know what the risks are, but I know that. Oh, no, you're right. The, the, we need to navigate that skillfully. You're right. Well, the 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 actual risk uh -huh. is um, if you. He's got to go to work. Oh, okay. <laughs> the actual risk I, I, I'm okay. is uh, if, you, if you don't understand the instructions properly, you, there are a lot of detours you could end up in. <laughs> and, and they look great, you know, but it's a detour. <laughs> and people mm. might get stuck in the detour. Yeah, with Tokyo, I haven't heard of any physical harm. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. But but what it does is it, it you know, and, and you could end up ending, you know, you could leave this life thinking, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. And so that's an that's a hard thing to correct, yeah. you know, and that's one of the good things about having a teacher is that after every session, you go one on one with them, you explain how the practice went and everything else. And, you know, if you happen to be detouring, they'll go, Meh. go. <laughs> They're not going to tell you what the end state looks like, you know, that they're not going to tell you that because that's the thing you that you to have to find. Yeah. You, need to, you need to tell them exactly what was going on. So, By the way, we can get put you guys in touch with teachers. Too, yeah, exactly. Authentic teachers. exactly. You just talk to us. We'll, we'll get you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should jump in, though. It, yeah, we should all jump in this. Right, wonderful. Thank you so much. And I will say okay. goodbye now. Bye. 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 <laughs> By the way, guys. Um, okay. okay. Um, I'm just going to put my new age, somewhat controversial input into this too. Um, in case anybody wants to, to be a rebel with me. Uh, resting in awareness. And then your natural state. The, these visions, this illusory reality starts to, you know, open up. The boundaries between people, literally the lines that we draw with our eyes, start to go away. Rainbows expose themselves, vortex, helix, bindus, whatever you want to call it. Of course, if you're sitting here with no effort, your contriving, conceptualizing mind starts to settle. You know when you're imputating, you know when you're doing dependent origination. Well, in awareness, you start to see when you're when you're creating reality. So when that creator stops, what's left is this luminous revelation. There's a revelation then happening within luminosity. That's the biggest hindrance in Tokyo is that you can conceptualize your way out of it right, exactly. or away from it. But if we as awareness holders understand when we're conceptualizing, right, and then, then, then we can allow revelation. And so Togia expedites that. 
you don't have to wait for revelation and <laughs> taking you right there. So that's why I think we should start to dive in a little bit. But um, and the dark retreats, too, that we're talking about. But um, at the same time, remember that the nature of our mind is the primary thing here. You know, the awareness nature. There's nothing you know more spectacular than that, according to the scriptures and the teachers. So. But I do want to thank my mom. She's got to start her day. So thank you, thank you so much. Nice you. So. <laughs> and hopefully see her in the next session. And spread the word to to whoever you're in touch with that we're going to be reading in the next session. And it might be a little bit more interesting than just watching me crack dad jokes for an hour. <laughs> 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 but, um... Yeah, so you guys have a beautiful day. We'll do one more dedication because, of course, talking about uh, Dzogchen and the silent sit that we had in the beginning, um, uh, including this reading, the Yeshi Lama, and then uh, just clarifying the view, talking about it, uh, it generates an enormous amount of uh, merit, compassion, and wisdom, which uh, right now, in this moment, there are beings who are starving and injured and sick, trapped and lonely, uh, in this very moment, we dedicate all this merit to them without exception. Gewa magen dodo kunlano Gewa magen dodo kunlano Gewa magen dodo Thank you guys so much. I think that, uh, you know, the two phones don't work either. We're going to have to figure out a way we could chant together without all the noise pollution. Use my, my computer and it has a bigger screen and everything. Well, it's actually a matter of audio inputs on Jitsi. So we might even have to get a different platform or, or figure some. Yeah. Um, are you taking this with you right If now? you don't mind, yeah, I'll, probably, I've got to, I've got to work I'll probably right take now. a nap and then read Okay, it. okay. Okay, cool.